Welcome to the Sustainable Agriculture Beyond Organic lecture. In the previous lecture, we identified certain farming techniques used to farm organically. This lecture will discuss how those practices get communicated to the consumer so she or he can make an informed decision. What does the word organic mean to the consumer? A certain image comes to mind and the label organic tends to bring up images of small-scale local farms providing healthy food in an environmentally friendly way. That may be the case, but the USDA organic label has a certain set of rules that farms must follow to be able to add the label to their products. We are all now familiar with the USDA organic certification label. If a product has this label, the government is verifying that the product was produced without synthetic chemicals, growth hormones, antibiotics, or genetic engineering. Other things like animal cage size requirements are also outlined in the rules. First, a brief history of how this labeling program came to be. Decades ago, an organic agriculture movement had developed as an alternative to chemical industrial agriculture. Several states had their own standards for the organic certification process. The organic industry grew rapidly as consumers began purchasing more organic foods. Bigger producers, aside from the small-scale organic counterculture movement, also wanted to get in on the organic market. But being bigger, they would be selling across state lines and the different states had different standards and certifications. So producers petitioned the government to develop a national label to make it easier to sell organic food across the US. While the USDA label was being developed in the 1990s, those same big companies that the organic movement was in opposition to actually helped to draft the rules and set the standards for the organic label. The initial rules allowed things like irradiation of food, genetically modified crops, and sewage sludge for fertilizer. Consumers and the organic farming community rose up in opposition and were successful in prohibiting these practices by the national organic standards. However, the big food companies did win a victory when the USDA allowed for a three-tiered labeling system. The USDA will provide three types of organic certifications. 100% organic, in which all ingredients must be organic. Organic, in which 95% of ingredients must be organic, or made with organic ingredients, in which 70% of ingredients must be organic. How did this benefit the industrial food companies? The three-tiered labeling system allowed them to produce highly processed grocery items with an organic label. Organic became a production standard rather than a philosophy or an attempt to produce healthy food with minimal harm to the environment, communities, or farm animals. This is in contrast to what, what Michael Pollan has called the organic ideal, which is a model for agricultural production that is very different from the modern industrial agricultural model. He says the organic ideal is a sustainable system that requires not only no synthetic chemicals, but also few purchased inputs of any kind and that returns as much to the soil as it removes. Again, an emphasis on how important soil care and management is for organic agriculture. What does it mean when something is sustainable? In basic terms, it means that it will be able to continue into the future. In the case of producing food, a sustainable agricultural system would be one that doesn't destroy the means to produce food in the future, and ultimately promotes agricultural resources like soil and water, benefits communities, and is economically viable. To do this, we might want to look to nature and understand the ecology of a place. 
natural ecosystems are self-sustaining systems that don't require inputs to come back each season. Think about the natural prairie compared to an agricultural field. A farmer doesn't have to plow and seed a prairie, it just comes back in the spring. Sustainable farming would try to get as close to that as possible. Natural ecosystems are healthiest when there is enough diversity of organisms. Farms can also benefit from diversity, for example, in terms of pest management. Cycling nutrients, such as using compost or manure fertilizer, will also help to minimize inputs and help build healthy soil, which is the foundation of agriculture. Minimizing inputs will not only allow the farm to function more like a self-sustaining system, but will also make food production more economically and environmentally sound by lowering costs and pollution. Making the farm more self-sufficient will also make the farmer more self-sufficient and support the community. Sustainable agriculture depends on a sustainable community, sustainable environment, and a sustainable economy. Commercial agriculture in the U.S. is currently controlled by agribusiness companies. Even brands that we think of as small, independent, organic companies are owned by larger companies. The organic market has become consolidated, just like the seed and livestock industries we discussed previously. Organic standards have become corrupted by an organic label that leaves out the organic ideal philosophy. Because of this, some organic farmers are not bothering to get the organic certification, but are instead remaining committed to the organic ideal and letting the consumer see that for themselves. Terms like beyond organic are being used to describe farmers who practice organic agriculture according to the USDA standards but also practice the organic philosophy. Without a label to vouch for them, they would need to be small scale and accessible to the public so that the public can visit the farm and ask questions. To the consumer, the price of this kind of food system may seem more expensive because it does cost more cash, re cash register, but there are hidden costs to industrial agriculture that consumers pay for in other ways. Through taxes, people pay to clean up for uh, water or soil contamination, and they pay subsidies to industrial farms and federal taxes. People may pay more for medical bill bills or for junk food that they wouldn't buy if it weren't available. Michael Pollan has suggested that eating is a political act because it is the consumers who can shift the agricultural system. Each food purchase supports an agricultural system and the policies behind that system. So even if people aren't willing to march in the streets, they can speak politically about our agricultural system by choosing what to eat. And that concludes the Beyond Organic Lecture.